Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Now, here in North East Derbyshire today, I'm starting outside this structure, which may look a little odd. I wonder how many of you know what that is. I certainly know what it is. Now, I will tell you there are at least two or three of these we'll see on our walk around this place, but I believe there's actually 10 of them uh, dotted around this place. So we may see more. Now, that structure goes down into the ground and what's under the ground here has defined historically what's on the surface. Welcome to Clay Cross. Cross is a former industrial and mining settlement about five miles south of Chesterfield. It lies directly on the A61, a former Roman road. Surrounding settlements include North Wingfield, Tupton, Pilsley and Ashover. The A61 or the High Street was built over a predating Roman road that was called Ricknell Street where a toll house was situated. The discovery of coal in the area introduced the village to the Industrial Revolution. Pack horses at first transported over the peaks on a turnpike road opened in 1756 between the iron foundries of Derby and Sheffield. Until the early 19th century, Clay Cross was a small village known as Clay Lane, but increasing demand for coal and other minerals trebled the population by 1840. A map from 1833 simply showed Thanet Street and Clay Lane. Okay, so it's brief, briefly mentioned in the Stratton episode about Ricknell Street. I've seen it spelt two ways, with an I and without an I. Here it's without an I. So, I don't know which way is actually right. There are a few references to it around Claycross. Arguably, Claycross's most famous associate is George Stevenson. As we'll discover in a short while, without Stevenson, Claycross would not be what it is today. Now, a little bit later, I'll be taking the car down here towards Danesmore, the Danesmore area of Claycross. Obviously not that way because it's uh, no entry, Black Spice Road, but I shall be coming out there. That This is where I shall finish, and I'll head back that way to do my next bit. For now, I'm walking up Broadleys back into the town centre, and I feel like I must correct myself from the North Wingfield episode because I referred to Claycross as a town. It's not a town. The only town in North East Derbyshire is Dronfield, Claycross doesn't have town status, which is a bit weird, considering it's got all the hallmarks of a town, but there you go. He would form the Claycross Company, albeit under a different name to begin with. When Stevenson died in 1848, his son Robert took over, leaving the company in 1852, when it became formally known by the name of the Claycross Company. In 1840, the Stevensons built Eldon House as its office headquarters, which latterly was converted into a private dwelling. The Stevensons also built more than 400 miners' cottages. In addition, they set up elementary schools and consecrated new churches. The company provided the town with almost all of its energy needs in gas and electricity. Okay, the building behind me now is some kind of working men's club from 1911. There is something at the top that says something, something, men's club and institute, but I can't read it, it's very faded. So uh, yeah, thought, I, thought I'd include this, but I can't actually tell you what it is. In 1871, the Jackson family acquired 100% of the stocks and shares. They continued as owners until 1974, and for many years the company was the town's major employer. 
In 1985, a company called Bywater took it over, and in December 2000, Bywater sold the site to French company saint gobain Some months later, it was closed down with the loss of around 750 jobs. Demolition of the vast Bywater site began in late 2008, and new houses and shops began appearing in its place. So how well served is Clay Cross, generally speaking? Well, it has a bus station, that's one thing. Let's see what else it's got. There are a total of 11 buses that serve Claycross, with destinations including Chesterfield, Matlock, Clown and Bolsover. And there's a service called the Comet, which calls through Claycross on its way between Chesterfield and Derby. This is a bus service we've briefly mentioned before. All the buses call at the central bus station, which is a recent development. Claycross Hall was built in 1845 for the Claycross Company's general manager, Charles Binns. It's now a resource centre and linked to the building next door. And next door is the Claycross Hospital, and this is not the first hospital the town has had. The house next to the former Victoria Hotel on the High Street was once the Claycross Colliery Hospital. Just a few more paces further to the east brings us to Charlie Park Leisure Centre on the A6175 Market Street. This has a swimming pool, a gym and sports hall facilities. It stands at the entrance to Charlie Park and the centre is owned and operated by North East Derbyshire District Council. A new fitness suite recently opened in 2012 at the Leisure Centre as part of a £530,000 redevelopment. The park is quite extensive, it features some football pitches, cricket pitches and even something for the golf fans out there. Now then folks, we've heard of golf courses before, of course we have, but have we ever heard of a disc golf course? Well, if you come to Charlie Park here in Claycross, you'll find a disc golf course. Nine holes and it's right here. Now I have absolutely no idea how to play disc golf, but I assume it's sort of like throwing a discus towards the hole as opposed to a ball with a stick. I don't know, maybe there's some disc golf uh, experts out there who could help me out with that, but uh, this is where it is. Claycross's Disc Golf Course. How about that? Charlie Park Community Primary School sits at one end of the park and this building is a nursery named Stargazers. Now to the Anglican Church of St Bartholomew. This was built and consecrated in 1851. Six years later, a spire was added. The Reverend Joseph Oldham and his wife Emma were the first conscientious incumbents. Her brother was a radical designer and founder of the arts and crafts movement, William Morris. Morris was commissioned to install a saintly stained glass window. The main war memorial for Claycross is situated like the church. St Bartholomew's Church you get a cracking view into the valley below. Now along there is uh, the likes of Stretton and Woolley which we've seen before in the Stretton episode. Let's carry on walking around Claycross see what else we can find here. In the church grounds you'll find this stone which is the oldest structure in Claycross. This according to the plaque that accompanies it is the base of the original cross that gives Claycross its name. It was destroyed in the 1600s. Other places of worship, and there are many in Claycross, include a Methodist church on the High Street,
the Salvation Army, located on Thanet Street. The Community of Christ, which is also located on Thanet Street. and the Claycross Community Church Assemblies of God on Market Street. There are a few others too, including a Baptist church on Market Street, which is now closed, and we'll see some more of the others in a short while. There are many shops in the town, some new and some very old. Market Street and the High Street have the oldest ones, these tending to be more independent retailers. In the 2011 census, Claycross was 97.7% white British with a 1.1% Asian minority. It covers an area of 9.242 square kilometres, which gives it a population density of 1,064. Claycross's town centre underwent a recent £22 million redevelopment, which has so far included a new supermarket, a new bus station, which we've already seen, and also a new relief rack. There's also a new parade of shops and a new medical centre. Claycross is a settlement that's well and truly on the up again now after having suffered job losses when the collieries closed. There's quite a number of pubs in Claycross too. Some are no longer operating as pubs, and this is by no means a complete list of all of them. But on my walk around, I found the Three Horseshoes and the Nags Head, both of which are on Market Street. So too is the New Inn. And so too, opposite Thanet Street is the George, which has been known in the past as the George and Dragon. This is the oldest building in Claycross. Almost directly opposite that on Thanet Street is Big Jim's Steakhouse, which looks like an old pub that's been converted. Maybe you Claycross locals can confirm this. Claycross has a police station, which I didn't film, located on Pilsley Road in Danesmore, but on Market Street, next to the Old Baptist Church, you can see the Old Constable. Also on Market Street, there's a fire station situated across from a number of the pubs we've just seen on the corner of Waterloo Street. And there are a couple of vets here as well. Here's one such example on Broadleys, the Charlesworth Veterinary Surgery. Now, I wonder if anybody out there has worked out what that structure was at the beginning of the video. Well, we're about to find out. Let's go to the interesting features. And there's one thing here in Claycross which goes above everything else. Let's go and find it down there. During the railway boom in the 1800s, the North Midland Railway drove a tunnel under Claycross, and it was this tunnel which would lead to the town becoming what it is today. George Stevenson discovered both coal and iron in vast quantities underneath Claycross. Because of these incredible finds, Claycross became a boom town, and the population soared immeasurably. Now, of course, this is as close as I can get to the entrance to the tunnel because obviously there's fencing in the way and there's an, an active railway line down there. So obviously going down there would not be a good idea. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that uh, the picture bit will help me out here because I did find some very nice pictures of Claycross Tunnel uh, on the internet before I came here. So hopefully you'll get the idea from uh, these shots here what the tunnel entrance is like at this north end. Uh, but uh, you'll see it properly in the uh, picture bit in a few moments time. 
The Clay Cross Tunnel, officially then known as the North Midland Railway Tunnel, was dug in 1837 and 1838, and it didn't take long for Stevenson to form the Clay Cross Company in 1839, funded from their considerable resources. We're at the northern end of the tunnel here, and the portal is a Grade 2 listed building. This is as close as you can get to the portal, but further up the footpath that runs alongside this, there's a footbridge which supposedly gives you a great view. The Northern Railway portal is of magnificent Moorish design. The Southern portal is inaccessible on foot. They almost look like castle turrets, don't they? They're very similar to that. You would have thought, you know, if you looked overhead uh, at the aerial shot of this, you'd have thought there was a castle here. But uh, no, nope, this is just the entrance to the Clay Cross Tunnel. So there you go. And it's uh, a fabulous piece of architecture. I should also mention as well that this footpath is in fact an old railway line in itself, believe it or not. This is part of the Ashover Light Railway, which no longer exists. We'll talk more about that in the Ashover episode. So what are those strange structures that we saw at the beginning of the video? Well, given that steam trains were using the line at the time, it's perhaps no surprise that these exist. The North Midland Railway Tunnel required ventilator shafts through which smoke wafted across the peaks. I'm led to believe there are at least nine, maybe ten of these dotted throughout Claycross. On my walk around, I located five of them in total. Perhaps a Claycross local could let us know where the others are. Comment down below if you know. As we discovered in the Topton episode, Claycross Station, which wasn't far from the tunnel's north entrance, has now been demolished. Claycross Station closed as part of the beaching cuts in 1967. The nearest current railway stations are Chesterfield, which is six miles away, and Alfreton. So that was about an hour's walk around Claycross, everything you've seen so far. I've enjoyed that. Really good, really good early in the morning to get to blow the cobwebs off and get a nice walk in. Okay, we're not done yet. I need to put the camera on the dashboard now. We're going to explore Danesmore by driving around it. And to finish with, I'm off to a place called Woodthorpe Grange, where I've spotted something, a nice way to finish this Claycross episode. Let's go. Former Bolsover MP Dennis Skinner was born in Claycross and he grew up here. A former miner, he first worked at Parkhouse Colliery in 1949, which was located a mile to the east of Claycross. Other famous residents here have included Eddie Shimwell, who was an FA Cup winner and licensee of the Royal Volunteer Pub, and Arthur Henderson, the former Labour Party leader. He was a Nobel Peace Prize winner in 1934 when he was MP for Claycross. The average house in Claycross these days sells for £159,000. I stopped briefly in Danesmore to check out this war memorial and the St Barnabas Church, an Anglican congregation meeting at the St Barnabas Centre on Pilsley Road. Our drive takes us towards the Danesmore Cemetery Chapel, which has something called the Parkhouse Memorial. In November 1882, an underground explosion brought the collapse of the pit shaft at Parkhouse Colliery, causing the death of 45 men and boys.
So having come through Woodthorpe Grange, I've now turned back on myself and I'm here in a place called Homegate and I'm opposite a football ground. That there is the home of Claycross Football Club. Let's see how close we can get to this because it looks like it's a little bit obscured with trees and bushes and things. Hopefully we can get a few good shots of it. Homegate is little more than a housing estate situated to the west of Claycross. It's very residential, but it does have some key features. For example, Homegate Evangelical Church on Valley Road, and this is right next door to the Homegate Community Centre and Sunflowers Nursery. Just to the west of Homegate, there's the Batemans Mill Hotel, originally called the Woodthorpe Mill. The mill was built in 1831 as a working corn and flour mill, processing corn for the local community up until the 1930s. The Bateman family took over the tenancy in the 1880s, but later sold the mill to a buyer outside of the family sometime after. Five football clubs from Claycross, all now extinct, have competed in the FA Cup over the years. These are the original Claycross Town FC, formed in 1874, Claycross Zingari FC, Claycross Town FC, formed in 1909, Claycross and Danesmore Welfare FC, and Bywater FC, who are also formerly known as Claycross Works FC. The town's current team, the third to be called Claycross Town, play here in the Central Midlands Football League. Okay, you drew a picture bit now for Clay Cross, aren't you? Here it comes right now. That's the parish of Claycross, and I think the rain is just about to start. So, in my next Northeast Derbyshire video, which you're going to see, I might be getting wet. Hopefully, not, but it is starting to spit now. So, good job I've got the raincoat on. Hope you've enjoyed the parish of Claycross. That leaves us with four now in Northeast Derbyshire, and uh, yeah, it's been a, a good district this one so far, hasn't it? But I think the last four are probably the four of the most interesting that this this one's got to offer. And I'm going to my next one now. So this has been the Parish of Claycross and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.